All right, guys, so today we are going to make a lamb ragu and some fresh pasta, which we will turn into tagliatelle. Let me start off with the ragu. There are very simple ingredients. We start off with lamb, which is being ground through the machine. Uh, probably one time through the, uh, not, not the finest, not the biggest settings. And um, we have some tomatoes for our acidity. We have some tomato paste sauce from our acidity. We have some aromatics, uh, garlic, celery, carrots, bay leaves for our bitterness, and also for aromatics we have some garlic. And uh, we have some anchovy for umami. You guys, you like roast beef or burgers, right? The most tast tastiest thing about the burgers is the outside, is what we get from the mallard reaction. This is when uh, the meat is caramelized. And for that to happen, we need heat. So we're gonna start off with putting a nice heat with our uh, lamb. Start off, we season it. So we can season it with some salt and some uh, pepper. So we'll add some salt here. There's a little bit of pepper inside there as well. And we get the pan nice and hot before we add our oil. And just put this inside. What the salt does, affects the protein, the sodium, and causes it to lump together, which is what we want. We don't want to have our meat sauce to have very small pieces. It's nice that they have little big chunky things inside. So we start with some oil, not too much oil, because there will be a lot of fat rendering from this as well. So put a little bit of oil inside, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And you can hear that sizzling. That means it's up to the temperature. It's very important that you don't cool this pan down because we want heat. And, you know, as soon as you put, if you put something cold into something hot, something hot gets cold and we need the heat. So we don't overload the pan. Just add our meat to it. You can hear the sizzling. That's actually water evaporating. So add in our lamb to this. As I said, we don't want to keep moving this around because we want that crust, that delicious bit that we love in burgers or roast beef, the outside. We want to put that inside our sauce. So color equals flavor. And for color, we need heat. So there's no, we don't add any water or any liquid right now because by doing so, we will reduce the temperature. While we're waiting for that to color, we will, we can prepare our mirepoix. Generally what a mirepoix is, it's a certain percentage of vegetables to me. It can be 10%, 20%, but it depends what you are after. But a mirepoix is made up generally of 50% onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery. How we cut it also depends on how long the cooking is going to be, how long we're gonna need the cooking for. And just roughly cut that into some strips. And this is, as I said before, this will take about three hours of cooking to bring out all the flavors. Of course, you can make it quicker. Now, what do you hear? We can hear the meat cooking sizzling. You have to always keep your eyes and nose open. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that around and it's stuck to the bottom of the pan a little bit. That's okay because it's gonna be deglazed. As long as it's not burning or catching, it's fine. So we just leave that there. Let the water evaporate. And once the water has evaporated, the heat will start to increase. As long as there's water inside, uh, it won't color. So we have to remove some of the water and we do that by, uh, by cooking. So just cutting these carrots down. Okay, so how much of a mirepoix what percentage is onions? 50, good. 
So what happens to something hot when you put something cold in it? Okay, and what do we need right now? Heat. And what is the job of the heat? What, what's the heat going to do? It's going to bring our color, right? Color equals flavor. All right. So don't be quick to, oh, it's nice and brown. Let me add our liquid. Because once you add liquid, you've stopped the, the heat process. You can only cook a hundred degrees once you add liquid. Right now we need more than a hundred degrees. For the sugars to come out of the aromatics, we need 145 upwards. If you cook without coloring, in other words, if what we call is sweating, if I was to put a lid over this, I would reduce the amount of coloring because the water would come and hit the lid, drop back down. So the water wouldn't be escaping. But there would be heat in there from pressure. So we call that sweating, where we can get some sugar flavor from our vegetables without actually uh, coloring them. I want you to come over right now and just look to see what's going on inside this pan. Okay, can you see at the bottom here? Look, all that is font. We call this font, which is flavor. Okay. And you can see there's a fair amount of fat which has been rendered from the lamb. That's why we didn't add too much. Now, what we can do, we can add a little bit of flour to this uh, fat, and that would give us consistency, very much like what you do when you make a roux. Okay, so you can see now that there's lots of color there. Right now, this is when we would add our uh, mirepoix, our aromatics, because we've got enough flavor now from the, from the meat. So we'll just add these in and they will another five, ten minutes or so. Let them cook slowly. And then we will now start. We can put our bay leaf inside. These are from our garden. And also uh, tomato paste. Now the tomato paste we need, we need heat when we add this because this is very acidic. So what the heats do, the heats will cook out the acidity. So by putting some tomato paste and just stirring that inside there. Okay. So we just leave that to cook out. And then we will add our garlic. Now, salt is very useful. When we add the salt to the garlic, two things are happening. Firstly, this is, osmosis is going to happen. This is going to start to draw out the liquid. Secondly, which is also importantly, the salt is an abrasive. It, it's like when you are washing or cleaning any pots, you have that green bit. Okay, it's going to scratch. So, this will uh, cause the the salt will pull through the garlic and break it up. So we need to first crush it. And then crush the salt into the garlic. And then run our knife through it and chop it. Now, osmosis is happening where the, the salt is drawing out all the oils and the water that's been held with inside the garlic. <clears throat> so this is your first part. The next part that we do is that we pull the salt through the garlic and to do that we need a knife and by pushing it onto the board like so, just squeezing it through, you can see now how it's becoming into a puree. Using the top of the knife Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we don't want the garlic to burn. So if you chop it, of course, there's more area exposed to heat because the garlic is actually much smaller, you know, with smaller pieces. They're likely to burn. 
but by doing it like this, you are going to prevent it from burning. Okay. So bring it up and we'll add that now. Now you can see the colours are building up on the bottom. Now when you add liquid to that, those colours are going to lift up. Okay. Now, the next secret thing is anchovy. Anchovy is full of umami. So let's chop this up. Also, flatten it down. <coughs> this one there. So, what we've got left is two more, well actually three more ingredients. One of the greens we won't add till later, which is tom tomatoes. This is acidity and water. And these are fresh tomatoes. We can just add them. Uh, you can use tin tomatoes if you want, but this time of year, fresh tomatoes are very good. Of course, San Lorenzo, if you're in Italy, is what they use, which are looking like plum to uh, plum tomatoes. So look, these are full of liquid. See this, as I'm squeezing it, you can see that liquid. What that liquid is doing is reducing the heat now. What do you smell? It's a great smell, isn't it, coming out of there? So we just stir that in. Now, you can see at the bottom here, can you see how the pieces of the meat have stuck to the bottom of the pan. It's not burnt, but it's just giving color. Look at the, look how the tomatoes are now coming, the water from the tomatoes. Now, I'm gonna raise the heat up a little bit, and I will add the liquid. Now you will see how this, this is chicken stock. You can add either stock, veal stock, lamb stock, whatever stock that you want, vegetable stock even. Now, now, this will, as you can see, it's quite thin. As it cooks, as it's cooking down the bottom, the font, which is at, stuck to the bottom of the pan, will start to lift up and will be dissolved into the liquid. It's all flavor. And then with a the slow process of cooking, this is going to, the water is going to evaporate and intensify the flavor because, you know, if it is diluted, if you drink a, a squash, and more, I won't say the obvious, but if you drink an orange squash with water, the more water you put, the less orange flavor. This is the same thing here. What we are hoping to happen now is we want the water to evaporate, and that will intensify our flavor. Like then it is. Like then now, I don't know if you can see this now, but we tilt this to the side, but you can see how, look, the pan is starting to clean up as the font is starting to lift up. So just by using a, a, a rubber spatula, you can just scrape it along the bottom, <coughs> and this will cause this to lift up. So you can, and you can feel it. You can feel the vibrations through your hand as it catches a piece of the font. Okay, so we'll come back. We're gonna make the pasta afterwards, so let's Take a break right now. We'll come back after our break. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Okay, so guys, now the ragu is cooking. As I say, it's about three hours. It's been cooking for an hour or so. So now we will prepare our pasta dough. The pasta dough that we have here was from a recipe that I've learned from an Italian chef many, many, many years ago. And it is a mixture of semolina flour and tip zero zero. Put these together and with this is 270 grams of tip, 270 uh, tip zero zero and uh, 270 grams of semolina flour. 20 egg yolks, 20 and one egg white. So put these together Sieve it out. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, Mendu. Bring this together inside. And what we should do, we should, once we've made this, we leave it to hydrate in the fridge 24 hours. And what that does is that the flour starts to take the moisture from the eggs and makes it a much stronger dough to work with. So add our egg yolks and egg. So there's 20 egg yolks and one egg inside. So do you know how heavy an egg is? So here's what you do to, to get the weight of an egg. Because it's always an idea to weigh eggs because eggs come in different sizes. But how, how much is white, how much is yolk? Easiest way to work it out is that 10% of the weight of an egg is the shell. And 60% is the white. 30% is the yolk. So if our egg is weighing 60 grams, for example, so you weigh an egg and it weighs 60 grams, how much of that 60 grams is going to be the white? Anyone? Uh, is it? The yolk is 18. Because 10% is the shell okay so 10 percent which will be six grams will be the weight of the shell 18 grams will be the weight of the yolk so how much is the weight of the white 36 grams is the white okay so you make a well and you are just going to add this egg inside it's a good idea that you guys should research uh, as many of the sites on the internet. You know, when I was a, a trainee, we never had the internet. The only way that we could ever do research was to go to a library or listen to a, to a chef. But now, because we have the internet, there are so many different opportunities for, for young chefs to research. And never trust anyone. Use one that suits yourself. For example, this is a pasta re recipe that I actually prefer. Now generally, it would be one egg, which is 54 grams or 50 grams, to 100 grams of flour. So it's a ratio of two to one. And that ratio can be made up of either two yolks, or one egg, or if, you were to, if you're going to use 300 grams of flour, that would be three eggs. But three eggs is six parts, okay? The yolk and the white. So you could actually, if you want more of an eggy pasta, you could use four egg yolks and two whites, which will be two yolks and two whole eggs. Okay, so bring this together and you will have to knead it for a while so just let it let the flour start to do what the flour does and that is suck moisture so the flour is going to suck the moisture from the eggs and this first bit is always a little bit messy but your hands will clean up after a while so don't worry too much and the first person is just to press it all together and then you will need, need to knead it for a while. What we will do, in fact, we had one that we, we made earlier, which has been 24 hours inside the fridge. So I won't worry about kneading this. You just bring it together. This is a... Mendu, you have the one from before? So you wrap this in stretch film once you've brought it together and kneaded it. Yeah. And leave it in the fridge for a while. So you need to knead this for probably five or six minutes. I'm not going to wor worry with that. I'm just going to take it off and uh, say this is one that we did earlier. 
Now it's very hard right now, but it will come together. Making sure you pick up all the bits of flour and egg from the board. Okay, Mendu, you can take that aside now. Okay, now put a little bit of flour on the board. And cut the amount that you need. Now, depending what you're going to use this for, if you're going to use this for filling, like uh, for a ravioli or something like this, you want to make the pasta quite thin because when you put it together, it becomes thick. So if you if you have a normal pasta which is two two millimeters, if you're using that for a ravioli, for a ravioli, when you fold it over, you've got four millimeters. Which, which actually affect the cooking time. Because there is a high proportion of egg yolks in this, this pasta is very, very strong, which means that we can make it quite thin. We're gonna turn this into tagliatelle or fettuccine. Look, you see it's starting to stick a little bit. So it's time just to put a little bit of flour on top here, just to soften it up a little bit. What number is it? Three. Three. Okay, we can take this to one more. Now these is tiger tail. These are very long pieces to have, so we can fold this in half. Just take a knife for me, please. Take that edge off there. Take that edge off. You can use these again. Put these through the machine again. And then you want to just dust this up a bit more. And slice them to the size that you want. very humid in this kitchen right now so this pasta is it's very hot and very humid so now we're just going to open these up you need about 85 grams per portion depending if it is a starter or a main course and then you'll put that aside and let it dry out until you're ready to cook okay guys so what's what we have now we are cooking our pasta water. It heats up much faster with a lid and you season it later. Okay, this has already been seasoned, but normally season the water after it's, after it's boiling. Uh, put a lid on it. As I said, it causes a little bit of pressure, means it's gonna heat up, it's more efficient for you. You have your ragu here. Now, you remember I said to you, you can put some flour in it or not depending on the amount of fat which is rendered out of the lamb. When you are actually going to cook this again, we're going to boil this up, what will happen is any bits of fat which are inside there will, will emulsify inside of the sauce. So it will give that just a little bit of extra flavor. So if you see a little bit of fat on there, don't start putting flour in it, unless it's really greasy, and then you should have rendered it, took it out in the first place. So. We're just waiting for our water to come to the boil. In the, in the meantime, we can take a, a portion from your mise en place. You will take a portion of your ragu. Pop it inside there. So add a little bit of water to it. You could put a little bit of stock if you wanted to. Okay, water's boiling. Take our dough, our pasta that we made earlier, just drop it inside. It won't take too long to cook. In the meantime, adding the water has just loosened this down because it was cold, because you made it probably early in the morning or the night before. It will be in your mise en place in the fridge. Uh, if we were to heat this up directly, 
it would evaporate and that would affect the seasoning. Okay, it will become a little bit more saltier. So by adding a stock to it, you're actually using that uh, uh, liquid, in our case water, to uh, spread it out a bit so it will heat up that much easier. Okay, our pasta is nearly cooked. It's also an idea to put a bit of the pasta water inside. You're going to have some uh, basil here, which we're going to, uh, at the last minute, we will add our basil, we will tear it, we will add it to our polonaise, to our ragu. Okay, so comes to the boil. A little bit of water in there as well. Let that come round nicely and it will start to emulsify. You don't have to go crazy heat now, you're just running it through. Now I expect you guys to make this yourselves when, once I finish. Okay. So, add our, tear our basil inside. Last minute, all right, it will go black if we cook it too much. So, just run through our basil and turn it around. Take the heat off. Now, depending on how you want to serve this, you can take uh, the ladle that you used, put the pasta into the ladle, and then turn it around, like so, making sure you've got all of it turned around, and then pop it in this top. So, take any of your sauce that's left inside. As you can see, all the water is evaporated from it now. Pop it over the top. Add a little bit more inside there. Take your parmesan and pop the parmesan on top. Garnish with a few leaves of basil and there you go. Today we had the ragu. Follow this space because on the flip side we'll do something else. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance and I'll see you all next week.